Hello, my name is Alex Heyer, and today I'm going to be updating you on everything I've done since my last YouTube video. I've done a lot of tests and launches, and I'm going to go over all of those today. The first test I did of my rocket was a static fire. It allowed me to make sure the thrust vectoring mount could handle the forces and heat the rocket motor creates. It was fully successful and it allowed me to make sure the thrust vectoring mount would work properly in flight. After that test was successful, I did a parachute deployment test. This was to make sure my mechanical parachute deployment system worked properly. I did this by dropping the rocket from a drone and deploying the parachute in flight. The test worked perfectly and it proved the system works. After these two systems were proven to work, I only had a few more things to do before the first launch. One of those was to PID tune the control system. I did this by simulating the thrust of the rocket motor using two counter-rotating propellers and by putting the rocket in a two-axis gimbal on the center of mass to simulate flight. This setup ended up being very useful in a few ways. It allowed me to test the control system as well as PID tune the control system and also center the thrust vectoring mount. After that was taken care of, I only had one more thing to do before I was ready for a launch, and that was to build a launch pad. The launch pad is in charge of a couple of things, including handling the ignition of the rocket motor, it also holds the rocket upright until it's ready to launch, and it also has a flame diverter to route the rocket motor exhaust away from any sensitive electronics or anything I don't want contacting the exhaust. At this point I was ready for the first launch, so I did final preparations and then I went out into a field to do the launch. The launch went great and I'll include a video of it here. As you can see, the rocket was stable as it was going up, and the parachute successfully deployed. So it was a very successful launch, and I was very happy with it, as it was my first attempt. Soon after this, and after making a few improvements to the rocket, I went out for a second launch. Sadly, this launch did not go well, and I also did not get any uh, good video of the launch. A few seconds into flight, the rocket lost stability due to a problem in how I found orientation of the rocket. This problem was soon fixed after implementing proper rotation matrices to find orientation, and after that I have not had a problem with my orientation code. You might be wondering why this problem didn't cause the first launch to fail, and to be honest it was completely luck that the first launch was successful. After that problem was solved, I attempted a third launch, which was fully successful, so here is a video of that. Two! One! There it is! As you can see, the rocket was stable on ascent, and the parachute successfully deployed which felt really good after having that second launch fail. So after the third launch, I started working on improving my control system by switching from a normal PID system to a variable PID system. What this did was linearly scale the PID values based off the amount of thrust the motor is making at that time. This works to compensate for when the rocket motor changes the amount of thrust it's making which works good to improve stability throughout the flight. After I implemented the variable PID control system, I tested it by launching on a D12 motor. This motor is smaller than what I usually use, 
and because of that I didn't get enough altitude for the parachute to have enough time to deploy. Other than that, the launch was successful and it had a very clean and stable ascent, and it was a lot more stable than my past launches. Three, two, one. No shoot! <laughs> After that successful launch, I attempted another launch using that same variable PID system, except this time using an Apogee F10 motor, which was a lot more powerful than any of the motors I had previously used. The launch ended up having problems on ascent due to that variable PID system, but I'll get into that after I show you the video. One! Uh oh. <laughs> that launch ended up going really high and looking really cool, even though it did have stability problems earlier in flight. This instability ended up coming from the variable PID system itself. During the first two seconds of flight, the rocket motor creates a lot more thrust than it does during the rest of the flight. The linear scaling that the variable PID uses to compensate for motor thrust does not work good during these high thrust levels, and that is why it caused a pitchover during the first two seconds of flight. After the pitchover, it gained a lot of horizontal velocity, and once it straightened out, that horizontal velocity caused a lot of aerodynamic forces, which caused an oscillation after it straightened out. Once these aerodynamic forces died down, it flew straight for the last few seconds of flight and then successfully deployed the parachute. So after that launch, I wanted to start using a new control system that would compensate for changes in motor thrust, but also work at those high thrust levels. And that is where Torque PID came into play. Torque PID works by instead of calculating the angle the rocket motor needs to be at, it calculates the amount of torque the rocket motor needs to make, and by using the amount of thrust the rocket motor is making at that time, we can then calculate what the mount angle needs to be. After coding the torque PID system, I also incorporated altitude-based deployment into the code, which means instead of using a timer to determine when to deploy the parachutes, it would use the barometer to find its altitude and then deploy the parachutes at a certain altitude. This system works a lot better on high altitude flights when I don't want the parachute to deploy too early. On the next flight, I ran into a lot of problems. One was with the code that estimated how much thrust the motor was making. So even though the torque PID system was working, it thought the rocket motor was creating less thrust than it actually was, and that caused it to become unstable in flight. After the instability caused the rocket to call an abort, a mechanical problem in the parachute deployment system allowed the parachute not to deploy and the rocket came down crashing pretty hard. After I thought I fixed the torque PID problem, and after I did fix the mechanical problem in the parachute deployment system, I attempted another launch on the F10 motor. The launch ended up looking very similar to the previous launch, as it had a control system problem on ascent and a parachute problem on descent. The failed parachute deployment was actually for a completely different reason than the last launch, and it was because the barometer was filtering the altitude data way too much and it caused it to think the altitude was a lot higher than what it actually was so it did not deploy the parachute in time. Uh oh. Yeah. Where's the parachute? Where's the parachute? Oh my god. <laughs> so while I was doing all these launches, I had a side project going on called Conk. 
Conk is an electric hopper type of vehicle. It uses electric motors and propellers for propulsion and still uses thrust vectoring for control, just like my regular rockets. Version 1 of Conk was very similar to one of my regular rockets, except it had ESCs and a battery mounted on it, as well as the electric motors for propulsion. With this setup, there was no easy way to control the roll axis, so it would slowly start spinning, and then eventually the servos would not be able to keep up with the rate of rotation, so it would lose control. I improved this with version 2 by putting each motor and propeller in a separate thrust vectoring mount, which allowed me to easily control the roll axis, and I also made some carbon fiber landing legs to allow me to take off and land with it. I'm now currently working with Conk version 3, which is very similar to version 2, except it has upgraded thrust vectoring mounts, a new flight computer, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, and some changes to the landing legs. So this right here is the new flight computer I was talking about. It is called Ean version 1 and it runs off of a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller. It has a BMI 088 inertial measurement unit as well as a BMP 388 barometer. It can log data to a flash chip as well as a micro SD card slot. It regulates power using a 6 amp buck converter. It has a bi-directional DC motor driver as well as three pyro channels. So that's pretty much brought me to where I am today. I'm currently working towards another launch on Evermore 1.1 as well as getting some hop tests on Conk version 3. Once those vehicles are working good, I plan on starting up two more projects. Those are a two-stage rocket, and then eventually I plan on working on propulsive relanding. So if you want to stay up to date with what I'm working on, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, both at Higher Rocket Systems, and I also plan on uploading here a lot more often now. So I hope you have a good day, and goodbye!